infinity of the wide and wild blue yonder, man seeks answers to a variety of questions, some not yet posed. Along with another Apollo flight to the moon, there were two Skylab missions to determine the length of time man can spend aloft. As we looked closer, we realized there were things to be learned, things to be done nearer to home. Project Skylab, a continuation of the Apollo program and America's first space station, was designed to learn and do those things in near-Earth space that the technology generated by the lunar program had made possible. Large-scale launch vehicles had been proven. Man's viability in space had been established, and previous experience had provided us with the capability to send men to live and work for long periods in space. 147 principal investigators from the world over participated in the scientific accomplishments of Skylab. Skylab was made largely of equipment designed for the Apollo program. The orbital workshop itself was built from an unused third stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle. Returns to science were even greater than had been expected. The giant telescopes aboard Skylab had revealed mysteries of the sun that had been concealed for all recorded history by the dense, blanketing atmosphere of the Earth. But perhaps the most important contribution of Skylab is the realization that there is no recognizable limit to man's ability to live, to learn, and to produce in space. Man has made this new world his home. Skylab orbits the Earth silently now. Its systems powered down. The last astronauts have returned to Earth. But it has shown us that near Earth space is a resource to be used for the betterment of man. And the international cooperation engendered will hopefully increase and extend to other ventures in space. <laughs>